Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Radio Signals. My name is Mark, and my call sign is N9WIB. This is the Technician License Series Lecture 6, and today we're going to cover Electronic Components Part 1. In this presentation, we will describe what resistors are, review capacitors, and also introduce inductors and coils, as well as transformers. And we will also review what the concept of reactance, impedance, and resonance are. Resistors are electrical components, and what they do is resist the flow of electric current or charge. In the previous lecture, we reviewed uh, the concept of resistance, and this is exactly what resistors do. It's analogous to a valve in a water pipe. So if you have the valve open up all the way, you have the full flow of water or you have the full flow of current. If you shut the valve down halfway and reduce the flow of water, you're also reducing the flow of current in a similar electric circuit. Resistors also dissipate energy as heat. So if you resist the flow of current, you have to dissipate that energy by some method. And for resistors, it's in the form of heat. As we know, resistance is measured in ohms, and all resistors have power ratings. So you don't want to run one amp through a 250 milliamp rated resistor, or else you're going to have some smoke and potentially a small little fire. These are two examples of resistors. The set of resistors on the right side look like little cylinders or even little dog bones. And as you can see, they're painted with various colors. This is called the resistor color code. And this is how you determine what value the resistor is just by looking at it. So you can determine if they, if one resistor is a 1K resistor or a 20 ohm resistor or a 10K resistor simply by the color code. And I'll show you how to do that in the next slide. The small component to the left of it, which looks like some type of uh, uh, knob, is a variable resistor, or also known as a potentiometer. This is what is commonly found in a radio that controls, let's say, the volume. So if you've ever taken a radio apart as a kid, this is what you'd find as a volume control. This is the resistor color code. To the left, you'll find a table with the colors and their assigned digits as well as their multipliers and tolerance in the fourth column which we'll all explain in just a few seconds to the right you'll see a depiction of a resistor with four bands the bands to the far left will determine what uh, uh, what resistance value their resistor has and the band to the far right will determine the tolerance which we'll explain in a second. So let's take band A as an example. Band A has a color code of brown. So if we go to the chart and reference brown, we see that it has a digit value of one. Going to band B or the second band, we see that that has a color of red. And if we reference the color code chart, red has a value of two. And the third band from the far left or band C, has a value of brown and this is the multiplier value so we can say that this resistor has a band value starting from band a of one band b which is red has a value of two and band c has a multiplier value of brown which is one or a multiplier value of 10. So this resistor has a value of 120 ohms. And the last band, which is the gold band, or band D, is the tolerance. So tolerance is typically assigned a percent value. So the gold represents a value of plus or minus 5%. So in actuality, this resistor can have a uh, resistance of 126 ohms, or even down to 114 ohms. So that's 120 plus or minus 5%. Let's take another example to calculate the resistor color code 
and the value in ohms of this specific resistor. Now, this is all kind of bonus material. You do not need to know how to calculate the resistance just by looking at a resistor for the tech exam. So uh, this is all just for your better understanding. So in this case, we see the first color band here is a three. If we cross-reference the chart, we see that the value of orange is in fact a three right here. So the first band being orange has a value of three. The second band being orange also has a value of three. And the third band here has a value of 100 since this is the multiplier. The third band is always the multiplier. So let's calculate this out. So the first two values are 3, 3, and then we have a multiplier of 100. So we discover that this resistor has a value of 3,300 ohms. Or more simply put, 3.3 kilo ohms. And if we want to consider the last band or the tolerance, we can see that this has a gold level and the tolerance of a gold stripe is plus or minus five. So this is a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor with a tolerance level of plus or minus five percent. Resistors can be identified by symbols on a diagram. And that diagram in electronics as we mentioned in previous lectures, is called a schematic. And a resistor is identified by two wires at either end, or two electrodes, and this squiggly line in the center. And the squiggly line in the center is the actual resistor. And this is a fixed resistor, meaning that it has only one value for resistance. So let's say this could be 100 ohms. And as we mentioned, there are other resistors as well. So other resistors are variable resistors or potentiometers, and they're commonly used for volume control. And the schematic representation of this is very similar to the fixed resistor, with the exception that it has another arrow or another electrode here indicating that this can slide kind of back and forth and provide a variable resistance. So this component could represent or provide a resistance of, let's say, 20 ohms up to maybe 1,000 ohms but each variable resistor will be labeled accordingly. Another representation of a variable resistor uh, can be this. The normal resistor symbol for a fixed resistor, but you'll see an arrow through it such as this. So that also depicts a variable resistor. Capacitors are also a very common component of amateur radio. Capacitors store electrical energy within an electric field, and this will be on your tech exam. This is an important core concept. They store energy in an electric field, and capacitance determines how much energy can be stored. It refers to how much energy can be stored within the capacitor, and the unit of capacitance is called a farad. Uh, also known as, it's also abbreviated with a capital F. And in electronics, on the scale that we're dealing with, the farads are usually in micro, nano, or picofarads.
And one very important concept to take home is that capacitors take time to discharge. They are charged by applying a voltage to the capacitor or a battery to the capacitor. However, once that voltage is discontinued or unconnected, those capacitors still retain charge. So if you have an old radio or something that contains rather large capacitors and you unplug it and it's been plugged in for a while and charging and uh, you start to mess around inside of it, those capacitors are still charged. They may take seconds or they may take min minutes to discharge. And a lot of those capacitors contain a lot of energy. So you could potentially be electrocuted by contacting a capacitor within an electronics device long after it's been disconnected or unplugged, so be careful. Capacitors consist of two electrodes or two wires, and each electrode is connected to a metal plate or foil within the capacitor. Those plates are separated by an insulator called a dielectric. A dielectric could be something as simple as air, or it could be some type of solution or liquid or other material that separates the uh, plates from one another. And some capacitors have polarity while others do not. This slide depicts different types of capacitors. The capacitor on the upper left corner is shown and it has uh, different metal plates and those metal plates when you turn the knob can go in and out of each other and depending on the amount of surface area that those two metal plates contact or overshadow will determine the capacitance so this is called a variable ca capacitor and in a device such as an antenna tuner this is going to be a common feature you're going to have a variable capacitor in a older or more basic uh, antenna tuner the little square devices that you see on the lower left portion of the slide are also variable capacitors meaning they can have a capacitance from a few nanofarads to some to a few microfarads uh, in general and again if you were uh, a person who would disconnect or take apart their old radios as a kid you would come and see these as a tuning dial so that was a variable capacitor acting as a tuning dial and to the right of this you see a variable amount of capacitors are not variable capacitors but they're fixed capacitors with fixed capacitance and the large black cylinder on the left hand side has a capacitance value of 1000 microfarads and it's rated for 50 volts and this is known as an electrolytic capacitor and the electrolytic capacitors are cylindrical in nature and contain some type of liquid to separate a concentric uh, plates within the capacitor itself and you can see the gray side to this to the cylinder on the left that is the negative uh, polarity or negative charge of the capacitor so you would hook that up to the negative portion of the circuit and the opposite electrode to the right to the positive the other capacitors that have a rounded appearance are ceramic capacitors. So you can have different types of capacitors, some of which have polarity and some of which do not. So be careful when you're doing your hookups. Capacitors also have schematic representations. And as you can see, we have the electrodes on either side of the capacitor. and the two plates. So the plates are here and here. And in this case, this is a polarized capacitor. In which there is a positive end and a negative end. So hook up positive to positive and negative to negative and don't interchange them. And we can see the space in between the two plates of the capacitor is the dielectric. And this capacitor on this side is a non-polarized capacitor just depicted by two plates 
and two electrodes over here and it does not have a positive or negative side so it can be used interchangeably. And the last capacitor we see in the schematic diagram is at the bottom and what did we remember from prior schematics? That that arrow going through the component represents a variable device. So this is a variable. Inductors are another common component and inductors and capacitors kind of go hand in hand. As we learned, capacitors store energy in an electric field while inductors store energy in a magnetic field. That magnetic field is known as inductance and the unit of inductance is referred to as the Henry with a capital H. So the magnetic field has the properties of inductance and it is referenced as the Henry. All an inductor is is essentially a wire wound in a coil and that coil can be wound around air or it can be wound around a solid core such as a weakly magnetic material. And what this does is it increases the inductor efficiency or the efficiency of maintaining and storing that magnetic field energy. This picture is an example of different coils or inductors. The one to the very bottom left is a air wound coil. So there's really nothing in the center. It's just wound around air. The other inductors are known as toroids or toroidal cores. They're wrapped around a weakly magnetic material and which gives it a little more efficiency in storing the magnetic energy. If we combine two or more inductors, it forms a transformer and transformers are useful for stepping up or stepping down voltage in a circuit. In a schematic, inductors can be represented by various symbols. So the schematic diagram for a air core inductor is this over here. And you can see that kind of represents just a wire that's wound in a circle. A inductor that is represented with a magnetic core or core is represented by these squiggly lines with two horizontal lines over the actual inductor to represent the coil. These over here are variable inductors. And we can see they have the arrow going through them or another pointer indicating a variable device as a variable inductor there. And the final representation here is that of two inductors opposed to each other and this is a transformer. And as we learned, the transformer either steps up or steps down voltage in a circuit by utilizing two inductors. The next series of concepts are going to be a little more abstract and a little more difficult to understand. So first we'll cover resistance and phase. We know what resistance is and we know what phase is when we discussed the uh, sinusoidal pattern of alternating current or radio frequency waves. AC voltage and current are both sinusoidal. So we can have one sinusoidal pattern for voltage and another sine wave for current. In a resistor, those two waves are superimposed on one each, one each on each other and are essentially in phase. AC current and voltage change at the same time in a resistor. Again, so there's the uh, voltage or current are in phase and one is not leading or lagging behind the other. In capacitors, the, there is a phase shift. So voltage and current are out of phase when a capacitor is in charge. So they're not superimposed on each other. The sinusoids are not on top of one each other, but one is a little bit ahead and the other one is a little bit behind the other. In a capacitor, current goes ahead or leads voltage when a capacitor is charged. A current sine wave is ahead of voltage in a sine wave.
In an inductor, the opposite is true. The current and voltage are still out of phase. They're not in phase, but the changes in current lag changes in voltage, meaning that the inductor resists change in current. So voltage leads current and inductor. So we can say that voltage is a little bit of a head of current with regard to the phase shift or the sinusoidal patterns in an inductor. And the opposite, again, is true of capacitance. The current is head of the voltage. So those are things you're just going to have to, to memorize at this point and try to understand as best as you can. As we learned, resistance is the opposition of current flow, but it is specifically the opposition of DC current flow. So it's the opposition of direct current. Reactance is almost the same as resistance, but this applies to the flow of alternating current or AC current. So resistance is DC current and, react and reactance is the opposition of AC current. And in reactance with respect to a capacitor or inductor, the uh, it's known as a capacitive reactance for a capacitor and inductive reactance for an inductor. Both capacitive and inductive reactants also depend on the frequency of the AC signal. So these concepts may be on your tech exam. It's quite possible. And these will be explained in further detail in the general and extra uh, portions of the exam when you move on in your amateur radio career. But for now, just remember that resistance is opposition to flow of DC current and reactance is opposition of AC current. And there are two types of reactants, capacitive reactants for capacitors and inductive reactants for inductors. And both capacitive and inductive reactants depend on the frequency of the AC signal, as well as the values of the capacitor and the inductor itself. So impedance is going to be an easier concept. Impedance is essentially the summary of resistance and reactance. So if we don't want to talk about the indiv individual DC resistance in a circuit or the individual AC reactance in a circuit, we can refer to the general impedance of a circuit or res resistance to flow of current. And impedance is measured in ohms, but is represented by the capital letter Z. Impedance refers to the opposition of current flow in a radio circuit, since these circuits usually have both reactance and resistance. So it's just an easier way of saying resistance to current flow is impedance, instead of saying it has individual resistance for DC or individual reactance for AC components. Resonance is going to be, again, a little more abstract. It's essentially the equivalence of a capacitive and inductive reactance in a circuit at a certain frequency. So the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance, or the resistance in general, uh, but known as reactance, is going to be equal. So those two are going to be equal. And that, you can say, has achieved resonance. So a collapsing magnetic field in an inductor transfers energy to an electrical field in a capacitor. And that goes back and forth. It goes back and forth like a teeter-totter, or it also goes back and forth as a pendulum. So with the energy being transferred back and forth and the inductive and capacitive uh, reactants being the same, it can be said that this the circuit is oscillating and this essentially creates an oscillator. The frequency at which the capacitive reactants and inductance reactants are equal is called the resonant frequency. So when both are equal, it is at resonance. If a variable capacitor is used, then the circuit becomes a tuned circuit. So you can change the, the capacitor value and can change can change the inductance, the capacitive inductance, and you can essentially tune a circuit. Tune circuits help generate, pass, or reject signals based on their frequency. Let's try to better explain some of these topics before we complete the lecture. So we're going to review the 
inductors, capacitors, and resistors with regarding phase. So let's say this is a resistor over here to the far left. If an AC voltage and current are passed through this resistor, they're going to be exactly in phase. So let's say this yellow sine wave here represents both voltage and current. You can't see both of them because they're actually superimposed on each other. And an inductor, if we look to the right upper corner here, the there is a phase difference. There is a phase difference with regarding the current and the voltage. So the voltage in an inductor will lead the current. So the voltage is ahead of the current sine wave. Let's think about maybe two trains. So two trains are traveling at the exact same speed, but one train, the voltage started off maybe a few microseconds faster or earlier, uh, said more appropriately, than the current train. So they're traveling down parallel tracks, but the voltage train traveling at the same speed as the current train started off a few seconds or milliseconds faster than the current train. They're paralleling each other, but the voltage is ahead of the current train. Now, the exact same thing happens with the capacitor, but the other train, the current train, is leading the voltage train. So the current train left maybe a few seconds before the voltage train left, but they're traveling at the same speed in parallel tracks. So the current leads the voltage in a capacitor, and the voltage leads the current in an inductor. So this wraps up another lecture. We hope you guys learned a lot. So we covered components one, which entailed reviewing resistors, capacitors, inductors, and we also learned about the concepts of reactance, impedance, and resonance. So we hope you enjoyed this and learned a lot. Please support our channel by going to our website, radiosignals.org, and also subscribing on the YouTube channel and giving us a thumbs up. See you next time.